Can we close the door so I don't keep looking outside and looking at people going, hi? <laughs> I have a long list of different smiles that you can do, and every model should be equipped with these. Everybody can't handle the long list. The list is like 275 smiles, but that's for, that's for, you know, advanced. So I'm gonna give you the beginner's course, which is seven different smiles. The first is smiling with your eyes. This is, you don't really smile with your mouth. Maybe a little, but not really, but it comes from your eyes. So this is not smiling with your eyes. And this is smiling with your eyes. We have an angry smile. That's when you have to pretend like you like somebody, like maybe your boss or somebody, but you really don't. So you wanna smile because you can't be like a little rude, you know what, you gotta kinda have to be professional. So that's a... Shoulders are very sexy and I don't think women use them enough. So here's the flirting with boyfriend smile. Turn shoulder slightly to your subject, tilt the head down and go, hmm. Someone just gave you a diamond ring smile and you have no idea why, but you're really excited. It's a surprise smile, it's <gasps> the commercial smile. This is when, you know, you don't wanna be too high fashion with your smile, you wanna relate to everybody. Hmm, hi, or over the shoulders best there is a high fashion smile that's often seen in American Vogue magazine. And that's, oh, this is the worst smile of all. You never want to do this. Smiling with the lips and not the eyes. Do you see me? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cheese, mm -hmm. <laughs> sorry, up here in my eye. It's okay, take your time. And get it out fiercely. I was 13 years old when someone told me I should be a model. I was sitting, first day of school, I was sitting on the bench. I'm 160 pounds now, I was about 118 then, so I was real, real skinny. And I was the same height, same height I am now. And this girl, actually an inch shorter, this girl came up to me, it was her first day of school too, and she said, and she was like, first of all, so gorgeous, Big, curly, like blonde hair, very exotic looking. She had this interesting high forehead. And she was like, oh my God, what's your name? And I was like, Tyra. And she's like, you should model. Has anybody ever said that? And I was like, have you lost your mind? My father was the one that took us on the tour, took me on the tour of Loyola and he met the professors and bought the sweatshirts. So he was like, college? You're not gonna go to college, you're gonna go to Paris, you're gonna model, like I know you do it a little on the side, but for real, have you lost your mind? And it was so bad with my dad. My mom and I took him to dinner. We took him to this soul food restaurant in Inglewood, California called M&M's. And so we had our little nice meal, we're sucking our fingers, we know from the little barbecue sauce and everything. And then we dropped the bomb about Paris. And he just smiled and he was fine. And then we get in the car, because my parents are divorced, so we all got in the car to drop my dad off. My dad jumped out of the car in the middle of the intersection and walked three miles home. So that was his answer to how he felt about me going to Paris. I think adversity has been a gift to me. I think um, the color of my skin, being a black woman, that is a gift. First of all, I love the color of my skin and the color of my people. Um, but with this comes adversity. With this comes doors that have been slammed in my face constantly. Even as a model, back in my modeling days, I'd say almost every single day, I heard, you can't do this fashion show because you're black. You can't do that magazine spread because you're black. You can't have this contract, modeling contract, because you're black. You can't be on the cover of a magazine because you're black. And of course, they get you down, but for some reason there's something inside of me that goes, you say I can't? Really? Watch me. I think that because the society right now is so obsessed with instant fame, reality TV does give today's society, today's younger generation, a chance at fame that never existed in my time and of course my parents' time and grandparents' time. It was a lot more of a climb, 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 and climbing and some made it, some didn't. Reality TV is a whole new world of that instant fame and a lot of girls do try to audition for America's Next Top Model and I question them and question them and question them and see, do you want to be on a reality show? Do you want to just be famous for anything? Do you want to be a model? Do you want to be a villain? 
do you really want to be a model? That is so important to me. Martha Stewart is like, I look up to her so much. I think she has such an attention to detail. When you hear the, the two words, Martha Stewart, you understand what that brand is, all the way down to colors. And I hope to one day have a brand that when people hear, whether it's my name or the name of the brand that I create, that they understand it immediately, that you get it immediately. You don't have to explain it. And that's what I aspire to. I think she's, she's fabulous. What I do is I, I, I try to um, make a negative into a positive a lot. Like in my career on a daily basis as, as a producer, I am constantly on America's Next Top Model on the talk show. There's always a, oh, that person fell out. They're not going to show up. Oh, this, this model's doing this. Or, oh, our budget is this. Or we just got cut. Like 30% of our budget got cut. I'm always trying to figure out a way to make it work. And there always is a way. And I think I learned that from my mama.